Thank you, Ben. Yeah, as Ben said, I'm from Canada. Uh, so, <laughs> woo! Thanks for welcoming me here tonight. And sometimes it's cold up there, we have nothing to do, so we think about things like this. <laughs> so, the role of alcohol in human evolution has often been neglected. I'm here tonight to fix that for you. 10 million years ago, human ancestors developed a mutation in the alcohol dehydrogenase enzyme, ADH4. This allowed them to metabolize ethanol 40 times faster. Ethanol is a rich energy source, and there was no competition. Alcohol became the primate niche. However, consuming alcohol has consequences, as I'm sure all of you are aware. <laughs> Intoxication is not much of a problem for solitary animals. They can take the extra calories, go sleep it off in a cave, and still come out ahead. But it's a whole different story for social animals. When social status is everything, cognitive impairment is a disaster. <laughs> so what will evolution do? Well, alcohol is getting past the blood-brain barrier and polluting all of those synapses that are working so hard. And the solution to pollution is dilution. With all of this energy, <laughs> with all of this energy coming in, it's not a problem to grow a bigger brain. So that's what we did. And then once we have this bigger brain, what's it going to do? Well, it does the same social modeling as our brain has always done. And when it does this... <laughs> this social modeling is effective in bringing higher social status. And that brings more alcohol. It's a positive feedback loop. Alcohol makes bigger brains, which make better social skills, which bring more alcohol. Some of you will recognize this as a social intelligence hypothesis, except here it's all powered by alcohol. So to reflect this, we slide an extra word in, and we now have the social lubricant intelligence <laughs> hypothesis. Let's look at the broader scientific context for this idea. Evolutionary psychology has found that the brain is made of separate modules. Each module functions as an individual watertight compartment, which should prevent you from getting too sloshed. Just like the Titanic. <laughs> For example, the module that says, I should go talk to that girl over there, is totally unaffected by the loss of the module that says, I am functional enough to hold a conversation. <laughs> We also conducted some experiments. These were rigorous and double-blind. Both participants and experimenters were blind drunk. <laughs> participants were grouped according to how much their parents drank, and then asked to complete a standard intelligence test. The initial results, as you can see, modestly confirmed this hypothesis. Participants whose parents drank more had slightly better performance when drunk. This effect was small, but still significant. However, a closer look at the data shows some interesting outliers. And in fact, rather than undermining the hypothesis, these outliers actually reinforce it. This small group of participants with the very high scores in the high parental consumption group convinced the experimenters to write the test for them. <laughs> the implications of this hypothesis can be found going back throughout history. 18th century England had a huge influx of gin from the expanding British Empire. There was so much of it that leading public figures proclaimed a gin epidemic. The fabric of society was being destroyed. But as it turns out, English society was not destroyed. This drunken, ungovernable set of people produced the Age of Enlightenment and the Industrial Revolution. <laughs> as it turns out, certain inhibitions are not very useful when making a steam engine. Or, <laughs> or writing poetry like Robbie Burns. 
Moving forward in time, the social lubricant intelligence hypothesis also explains contemporary American college culture. <laughs> Centers of higher education are overwhelmingly associated with alcohol consumption. Not only that, but as this hypothesis predicts, the social environment has been reshaped around complex cognitive and motor tasks, such as beer pong. <laughs> These often reward all participants, winners and losers, with more alcohol, perpetuating the cycle. Finally, let's consider the implications of this hypothesis for future research. Experts in artificial intelligence have had some success in getting robots to learn like human children. But the next step, since robots are still quite bad at social interactions, is to put a bunch of robots in social networks with each other and get them drunk. <laughs> Imagine the potential. Thank you all for your attention. As I said, I believe that our fluid intelligence is a key part of what makes us human. <laughs> it is not just an evolutionary hangover.